Hi, what if I told you there is a fundamental statistical concept that underpins everything from AI to medical research, yet it is often taught in the most confusing way? Get ready to finally grasp maximum likelihood estimation with an intuitive walkthrough. And let's start. In data analysis, you often want to estimate certain parameters, for example, the mean of your data, the coefficients of a regression model, or even the weights in a large language model like ChatGPT. Some of these tasks are straightforward, like finding the mean or standard deviation from a sample, but others are very complex, like estimating the components of a mixture model, the hidden states in a hidden Markov model, or the parameters of a large language model. But in all these cases, you can use a maximum likelihood estimator, short MLE, and the concept is more or less the same. To cut the long story short, MLE is used for really complex statistical methods, but to understand the basic concept, we'll use it to estimate the mean and standard deviation. Once that clicks, it's easy to apply the same idea to more advanced settings. And I know using a maximum likelihood estimator for mean and standard deviation is of course over the top. You'd normally use the direct formulas, but this example is perfect for learning the core idea. So let's start. Perhaps you already know that I love muffins and statistics. So I bought eight muffins and weighed all of them. Now I want to estimate the mean and the standard deviation using a maximum likelihood estimator. So let's put weight of the muffins on the x-axis and plot our eight muffins. To estimate the mean and standard deviation, we'll assume the data follow a normal distribution, a bell curve. The bell curve is defined by two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation, and those are exactly what we want to estimate. In short, if we find the normal curve that best fits our data, we get estimates of the mean and the standard deviation. And that's exactly what a maximum likelihood estimator does. But how does it work? Let's just pick a certain mean and a certain standard deviation. So we have fixed our bell curve. Now we can just draw vertical lines from each muffin weight up to the bell curve. That gives the height or density at each point. And in the next step, we can simply multiply those heights to get a single score. This score tells us how well this chosen mean and standard deviation explain the data. Now simply speaking, we can just try a different mean and standard deviation and we get a new score. Okay, but what exactly is this score? The score is the probability of observing the data given with the defined mean and standard deviation. Okay, our data are continuous. For continuous data, the probability of landing on exactly one value, for example this one, is zero. So we work with probability density instead. So great, we can calculate the likelihood for various parameter values. But how do we pick the best one? How do we pick the parameters that give us the maximum likelihood? We are literally searching for it. We are searching for the peak of the likelihood function. In our case, for example, we can start by varying the mean and keeping the standard deviation fixed for now. So we can just move the distribution from left to right and note the likelihood each time. The likelihood will typically rise, hit a maximum and then fall again. The mean at which the likelihood is largest is our estimate. If we also want the standard deviation, we can repeat this idea by scanning over the standard deviation or searching over both the mean and the standard deviation together to find the overall peak. And of course, you don't have to hand tune anything. 
There's a great optimizer and your computer will search for the best answer for you. And finally, let's have a look at the most fun part, the formula. L is the likelihood. Theta are the parameters, in our case the chosen mean and standard deviation. X are the observed values, in our case the muffin weights. The formula says, given the parameters theta, how possible is it to observe our data X? That plausibility is the likelihood. On the right side, F is the model's density function, in our case the bell curve. For any muffin weight and a chosen set of parameters, mean and standard deviation, F gives a density value at that point. We then multiply the densities for all muffins to get the likelihood of the whole dataset under those parameters. One last point. In practice, we almost always use the log likelihood, that is, we take the log of the likelihood function. The big advantage is that a product of densities turns into a sum of log densities and sums are much easier to work with. It's also more numerically stable, no multiplication of tiny numbers and it gives the same parameters. Let me know in the comments what topic you'd like next. How about drawing a histogram by hand? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time.